Amen. The, the Lord made, uh, gave here, and it's just tremendous scripture, and the scripture on both sides of it, I'll be mentioning it this morning. Um, look at verse number 29. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 29, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fail fall to the ground on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Now, everybody knows that scripture. But I want to use it this morning and give somebody a good encouraging thought here this morning and I want to preach on God will take care of you. There's an old song mom used to sing going around the house and she'd sing, God will take care of you through every day and all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. This is a wonderful, wonderful promise of God. Now, you know, a lot of times you tell people God's going to take care of you, and a lot of people say, well, my goodness, God takes care of everybody. And there is a sense. There is a sense in which God does take care for everything and everybody in the whole world, obviously. God takes care of everybody. He, he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He, he lets it rain on wicked people and righteous people. God, lets, God gives food to the most wicked blasphemers in the whole wide world all the time. God keeps the universe running. Every time a planet turns or the, or the, or the sun shines or the, or the uh, earth puts forth leaf, you know who's doing that? The Lord is. The Bible said over in the book of Job that he hanged the earth on nothing. No scientist has ever and can ever figure out how the earth just there in space and nothing's holding it up. They try to think, make you think they can figure that out. Talking about gravity. They don't even know what gravity is or how did it get there. The Bible said God hung it on nothing. He hung it there like you'd hang a picture on the wall. And God, he, he's take, he takes care. He, he makes the rain come, the sunshine, every, every little thing that goes on, the rivers flowing, it all. God does take care of everything. But there is a, another part, part to his blessing of the things of God in which he takes a special care for his children. In other words, like, like the Bible said, God so loved the world. He loved everybody in the world. But then it said Jesus loved the church and gave himself. He has a special love for his church. Any parent here today understands that. You love everybody, but you have a special love for your children, kids. That's, that's the part of God that I'm gonna talk about this morning. Uh, Jesus loved all his disciples, but he had that special love for John, the beloved. And he said the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, this does not mean that you will never have heartache. This don't mean that your heart not gonna be broke. This does not mean that you're never gonna hurt or have trouble or problems or burden. It does mean, however, that your heavenly father it says every sparrow that falls to the ground and he knows what you're going through and by his grace, he'll take care of you. I like to say first of all this morning, God takes care of you by looking after you. When you really think about it, not one of them. It said not one of them, not one of them shall fall to the ground without the fa heavenly father taking notice about it. Now a sparrow is not a very valuable bird. There's Billions of them. I mean, them little old scruffy sort of a, they ain't much impressive thing about a sparrow. If he'd have said an eagle or if he'd have said some big famous bird, something, everybody said, well, of course, man. Man, them eagles, they're valuable. They're, they're special. But he did little tiny sparrow. Now, if there is a sparrow in uh, Arizona that falls to the ground this morning, God takes notice of that sparrow. If there's a sparrow down in Mississippi that just now hit a truck. God takes care of that sparrow. Now that sparrow's gone, brother, but God will take, uh, he takes notice of that little bird. He takes notice of every one of them. There went another one, bam, wing. I got bug, they said this one truck come by and had uh, a, a bug uh, splashed all over it like that. And one of his buddies saw it and said, I bet he don't have the guts to do that again. 
And that, that's the way it is. Now you don't, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't do that again. But the, the, the notice is this morning that God notices that and takes care of those little spare. You know what that tells me? He's interested in us personally as individuals. It ain't like, well, God's going to take care of that group down there. God sees me. God sees little Danny. Little insignificant, no account Danny. God sees me. I ought to help you this morning. If God looks at every sparrow that got run over in South Carolina last night and every sparrow that hit the ground in Europe and Japan and China, if they have them, if God looked down and said, there went one, there went one, I guarantee you God's looking at you this morning and taking interest in what is going on in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, people. Uh, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You know what the devil will do to you? Listen to me. The devil will get you convinced that God don't care about you. I mean, this goes wrong. Then about that time, that goes wrong. Then about that time, that goes wrong. And the devil will come up and whisper in your ear and say, you go to church every Sunday and look what happened. You've tried to do right and now look what happened. Look at that now. Look what's happened to you. God don't care nothing about you. And it's right there in them times when you're going through heartache that the devil will whisper in your ear and say, God don't love you. God don't care about you. But you listen to me real careful this morning. You may be going through a hard time. You may be going through the worst time of your life. You may be hurting this morning. You may be all miserable and tore up inside. There's probably people sitting in here this morning that just barely, barely did even come to church today. You thought, what's the use in even trying? There's no, I mean, if everybody knew how miserable I was inside, and if everybody knew how tore up I am, if everybody knew how I was hurt, I'd just as soon die. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, God takes care of you by looking after you. He, he's taking care of you. He's watching watching over you, ladies and gentlemen, just cause everything's going bad does not mean your heavenly father's forgot you. He has not forgot you. He's watching over you right now, hallelujah. You remember, I remember that time when I read in the Bible, just read it this week, uh, the Bible, God looked down on all flesh and he looked down there and everything got so wicked and God said the end of all flesh has come before me. I'm going to destroy them. I'll just destroy the whole mess. I'm going to wipe out the whole stinking crowd. And uh, God looked down and he said, I'll just wipe the whole earth clean. But the Bible said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God said, all right, Noah, I'm going to take care of you. You build a boat and you do this, you do that. You know, he built a big boat, had three stories, got all the animals in there, and brother, he pitched that thing within and without with pitch, and the Lord shut him in, and the waters came down, the fountains of the great deep opened up, and the water came down. You talk about rain, brother. It rained over top of the mountains, and the whole world was flooded by that universal flood. Can you imagine? The whole world underwater. But God looked down to that one man and said, I'm going to take care of that one man. God who runs the universe. God who calls the stars by name. God looked down in that little tiny ark on that little tiny speck and said there's my man. I'm going to take care of him. And let me tell you this morning I've got news for you. His eyes on the sparrow and I know he's watching over you today. Don't you give up. Don't you get discouraged. Don't you throw in the towel. You just say Lord uh, 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 be not dismayed whatever be tied God will take care of you be not dismayed whatever be tied God will take care of you listen people I've been through some downs and some ups and I've been down so far you can't look you have to look up to see the bottom and during those times when you can't feel God see God God, hear God, it is in those times that him and his mighty power and him and his great omnipotence and him and his sovereignty is taking care of you. Hallelujah. He'll take care of you and takes interest in you. Whoa, hallelujah, amen. Listen, we're living in a scary time. Wars everywhere. Disease. You don't know what kind of disease is everywhere. We don't, you don't never know when a shooter is going to come in there at work or in a restaurant and just start shooting people. I'm glad to know if he sees ever spare that fall, he knows where you were sitting at McDonald's last night. 
Amen. That's right. You know, my girls were little. They'd say, Daddy, we want this. Daddy, we want that. Uh, Daddy, can we have this? And there were a lot of times, that's okay. We'll do it. And they're all, they're all here this morning, sitting around here somewhere. And, uh, and you know what I told them? There were times when I had to say, girls, we'll do the best we can, but I can't buy you every little thing you want. Have you ever had to tell that to your kids? Look, I can only get so much here now. You know, I ain't, I ain't the bank. You know, and I ain't made out of money. I'll, I'll get you what I can, but it may not be everything you want. You know, God don't ever have to say that. You know, when you're saying, Lord, I need grace, Lord, I need help, the Lord don't never say, well, I tell you, I'm running low on, on grace this week. I've had, to, I've had to spread it out for all you wicked people down there. No, no, no. The bank is full. The checks are open. I mean, brother, he's got enough grace. Whatever's bothering you right now, the grace of God's good enough to help you get through it. Quit. Hey, man, I'm telling you, he cares about you uh, by looking after you. Number two, God takes care of you by having to do with everything in your life. The Bible puts it like this. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Literally, literally, thousands of people in rest homes, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands in rest homes right now that think nobody, maybe don't care. We went over at the rest home saying the other night uh, before Christmas, we took the guitar and took a busload of kids and we went in that rest home and those older folks come in there, boy, and they, they rolled them in there and they sit there in them wheelchairs. We started seeing Silent Night and Joy to the World and stuff. And you know what? I seen those dear ladies, uh, uh, they were in their way, maybe up in their 80s, 90s, and their mouth was moving. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. You know, people riding up and down the interstate, they don't even think about them people sitting in there. They, never even know, they don't even know they exist. And, and a lot of times, we go on our daily life, you go to Walmart, you go shopping, you go to the grocery store, you go to the restaurant, you, don't, you forget that there's tens of thousands of them sitting out there this morning and not one person to talk to, not one person to visit them. And I'm gonna tell you what the Holy Ghost of God does. He'll go in every one of them rooms. He'll sit down beside them people. He'll say, I'm right here with you. I have not forgotten you. They may seem insignificant to us. They may seem unimportant to the world, but not to our heaven. Heavenly Father, if a father sees every sparrow that falls to the ground, glory to God, I guarantee you he's sitting over there in the rest home this morning right beside those dear ladies, comforting them, saying, well, I love you. Listen, there ain't no big shots and little shots to God. He loves all them people. He cares about the little children in Africa having to sit there and beat rocks all day long just to get a little food to eat. He cares about the people in China and Japan and in the hospital down when I was in Charlotte the other day at the hospital. One day this week, I was down there room after room after room after room after room. People in there sick and laying there dying. I'm telling you, he cares about every single one of them. Elijah one time got discouraged. He thought nobody didn't care about him. Elijah, a man subject to like passion as you and I. Don't ever think them people in the Bible were way up here and they never doubted. And then Elijah and half of them asked God to kill them. Half of them wanted to commit suicide and die. Didn't trust the Lord. And everything. they were just like me and you. How many of you, don't raise your hands. How many of you ever just said, Lord, just kill me? Ain't you glad God don't answer your stupid prayers like that? You'd have been dead a long time ago, would you? But God don't even pay no attention when you say stupid stuff like that. Listen, brother, when it comes time for you to go, you're going to go. You won't have to ask him. Uh, you're going, son. You're checking out of here. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. He takes care of you. Like he did Elijah. He sent the raven and to feed him. Daniel, one time, got in trouble. And old Daniel was going through a hard time. You see, every, time, every morning, get down and pray. Every at noontime, get down and pray. Every evening, get down and pray. For them Muslims get stuff like that, trying to mock real men of God. And uh, I mean, they didn't do it like it already. One, two, three, fall. That, no, 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 no. Daniel just got down on his knees and prayed. And these old jealous, wicked, religious men got together and they said, 
we can't even find nothing wrong with him. God, he lives so right. He makes me sick. I hate him. Uh, uh, the only way we're going to find something wrong with him is find it with his God. So they went to king and said, hey, king, why don't you pass a law that nobody can't pray to no God or make no kind of petition to nothing without to you for 30 days? Well, word got all over town. You can't pray. You can't talk to no deity. You can't talk to nobody about nothing religious on, for 30 days. Now, you know what most Christians would have done? They would have said, Lord, I don't read my Bible once every 30 days. No way. I'll just pray driving to work. Ain't that right? Most of But Daniel, he got down. Morning. Oh, God, help us. Noon. Oh, God, help us. Evening. Oh, God, help us. And I mean, he prayed and prayed. And Daniel, and they looked at him and said, ah, he's breaking the law. He's breaking the law. We found something wrong with him. We found something wrong with him. And they reported him to the king. King brought him in. And he said, uh, listen, buddy, I hear you've been praying three times a day. And I done passed the law, said you can't. Daniel said, that's right. Uh, that's right. And he said, well, ain't you scared? And he said, well, sure I am. But I'm, I'm more scared of God. And I want to do right. And, uh, and he said, well, I tell you this, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. They opened that lion's den up. There was hungry lions in there. Brother, they throwed that, that boy in there. And you know what? God, who sees every sparrow that hits the ground, sent his angel. And his angel, coming all the way down here, went in that lion's den. And about that time, one of them big lions said, mm, probably that hot sauce over here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on him. Mm, boy, Hebrew boy. I'm going to taste good. And about that time, he went, oh. get my mouth open. I want to bite him for better king stood. Oh. And the Bible, the Lord just goes, Stop. shut up, son. Was God taking care of Daniel? You think God loves Daniel more than he loves you? All you've got to do is trust him. All you've got to do is trust him. Don't go out and do nothing stupid. Don't go out and say, well, well, God let this happen, so I'll just go live for the devil. That is the dumbest thing you can possibly do. The devil's what caused your problem to start with. You buckle down and say, God, I may be in the lion's den. I may be on the river bank with nothing to eat, but you're the same God that took care of Elijah and Daniel and the Hebrew children, and God, you're going to take care of me. Number three, number three, he takes care of you by teaching you to prize your soul above your body. Now, that's where the world miserably fails you. The public school system, college, the whole world out there, they do not prepare you to understand that your soul is more important than your body. Their whole emphasis is on your body, your body, your body, your life, your body, your life. The Lord said, he said, fear not them, Matthew 10, uh, 28, right above where I've read to you a minute ago, all this is in Matthew 10. He said, don't fear them people that can just kill your body and then can't do nothing else. You better fear him after your body's dead can cast you into hell. That completely negates and wipes out this wicked demonic thing. Some of the preachers I'm going to show you in the next few weeks. Uh, by, by the way, that's really what happened in church. Preachers quit believing in hell. And uh, you, hey, you say, how do you know? Because they don't preach on it. If you believed on it, if, if you believe in it, you'd preach it. Unless you either, you either don't believe it or you're preaching for money. It's the only reason a preacher wouldn't miss it or both. And brother, uh, if, you, if you believe there's a hell, here's what uh, one of them said the other day. He said, well... Uh, he's talking about Gehenna's, just a garbage dump out there. And they were talking about the garbage. Oh, really? Is that really? Is that what you think Jesus meant? Do you think he said, fear not them, it can just kill you? But I'll tell you who you better be scared of, them pallbearers. Because after you're dead, they can cast you into the dump over there. You believe that? Jesus said, you better be afraid of what happens after you die. Who cares if you throw a dead body in the dump? That's just cremating it. He said you fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It's another place. It's another place. So the Lord takes care of us by teaching us 
We are to prize our soul way over our body. You check it out in the Bible in Mark chapter two. When they let that man down, sick of the palsy, you know what the Lord did? He didn't heal him, didn't take up an offering in Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket, buckets and go on five new stations next week. You know what he said? Thy sins be forgiven thee. You know what he's saying? Your soul is more important than your body. That's the Lord taking care of you. Every time I'm re- I remind you or you're reading the Bible, it's eternity. It's eternity that matters. This world ain't gonna last long. You ain't gonna, eternity's what matters. Eternity's what matters. It, what you have down here ain't gonna matter one day. What you own down here, your money, your bank account, it ain't gonna matter. What matters is eternity. What matters, God's taking care of you by reminding you of that. This morning, he's watching over you that after all has said and done, you know, every year, here at the beginning of the year, I start thinking, you always think, this might be the last one, might be, who knows. But I'll tell you one thing, I'd like to keep my priorities straight so that I live, I mean, you got to live, you got to eat, you got to pay your bills, you got to raise your family, you got to make, you got to do all that. But don't ever forget eternity is what is important, people. Don't ever forget that. Hey, hey man, old Corey Ten Boom, uh, many years ago in that, that um, concentration camp, when the Nazi Germans went in, raided Holland, and they rounded up people that protected Jews. And Corey Ten Boom and her family was arrested, that hiding place story. If you've never read that book or seen that movie, The Hiding Place, it's absolutely one of the best movies ever, ever been made to, to strengthen your faith. And that's what you ought to watch instead of stupid flicks. And, and, and that's right, that's why you're in the mess you're in right now. You watch too many stupid flicks. Let's all shout right there. Come on, y'all. What's too many stupid flicks? Ain't that what's about wrong with you this morning? Amen. Thank you, Brother Danny. Woo! You preach it, son. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. If you don't amen me, I'll amen myself. I'm telling you, you put in something like that. And old Corey Tim Boone, she's in there. And Brother Ed down there, they didn't have nothing to eat. Half the time, roaches and bed bugs and, and lice and everything all over them. And she's out there one day. She said the guard made them stand for roll call. And she said they stood there in roll call, her and her sister uh, Betsy or whatever her name was, and they stood there and stood there. And she said she looked up and her body was aching and everything was awful. About that time, a little bird flew over and was singing. And she said she looked up that little bird singing and she was reminded that his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. She said the next morning that bird came by the same time and sung again. She said three straight weeks every morning they'd stand out there and that little bird would come over and sing. Listen, that's God looking down and say, honey, you may be going through it bad down here but after all this is over, well, when you're shouting in heaven, which she is right now, I'm taking care of you by reminding you it ain't down here that matters. It's up there. Love that can never be fathomed. Life that can never die. Righteousness that can never be tarnished. Peace that can never even be understood. Rest that can never be disturbed. Joy that can never be diminished. Hope that can never be disappointed. Glory that can never be clouded. Light that can never be darkened. Happiness that can never be interrupted. Strength that can never be enabled. Uh, Purity that can never be defiled. Beauty that can never be marred. Wisdom that can never be baffled. Resources that can never be exhausted. Heaven that will never end. That's him saying, I've got you back, brother. If you're saved, I'm taking care of you. You know what Corey Tim Boom said? She said, oh, love of God, how deep and great, far deeper than man's deepest hate. Number four, he cares for you by leading you to confess him before other men. Verse 32 of that same chapter talks about whoever confesses me before men, I'll confess before my father. You know, the Lord's taking care of you by leading you and giving you opportunities to witness. Do you know that one of the best ways you know you're saved is when you witness, one of the things that seals the deal. I'll never forget, I'll never forget the night I got saved. You've heard my testimony. Um, I hope you don't get tired of it because if the Lord gives me strength, I'm gonna give it many, many, many times again. Amen, don't ever get over what God done for you. 
You don't need a deeper life and forget what God done for you and you got saved. You need to never forget where God found you, where he brought you out of, where you could be today if it wasn't for his grace. Amen? And I'll never forget the night I got saved. I, I told you the testimony before. I, got, I was 18 years old. I had that little old MG and had a little gear shift about that high. You just, I could change it like that with your hand. First gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth. Didn't have five speed then. And uh, I, I remember that little old gear shift there, that thing. I got down and prayed on that thing. And I went home. My mom was walking around in the house. You've heard me tell it with a dish rag. That's all. When I think of my mom, that's what I remember her doing. Why well, not? I mean, everything was so clean. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I mean, you couldn't, I mean, it, it, it was, we couldn't, I used, you wasn't even through eating. You ever, you ever been around somebody like that? You're not through eating. You just get a drink of water and they take your plate and go wash it. I ain't done yet. Daddy said he'd get up and go to the bathroom, come back and his bed be made up. Middle of the night. And, but you know, that's probably not true. But anyway, I, listen, brother, I, my mom was in there wiping out around the house and I said, Mom, I've been to church. My hair was down to here. I had an old pair of blue jeans with American flag right there. So don't, stupid looking. You shouldn't degrade the flag like that. And I stood there and something inside me said, tell her. Tell her. I said, Mom. I said, I got saved. She said, son, put the dick right down and hugged me. And you know what? It was, now, now don't get me wrong, I was already saved, but that's, it's, when I said it, it like sealed the deal. You know what I mean? There's something about confessing the Lord before other people. That's why Jesus called, everybody in the Bible he called, Nicodemus, woman of 12, he always called them, come out publicly and confess. And I'm not saying you can't get saved in the secret, but you ought to confess it publicly. And brother, it's like something goes, yeah, you got it. And buddy, when I said I got saved, she was the first person I ever told that I got saved, and rightly so. That's how it should have been. My mom, and she hugged me. I went and laid down that night, and I thought, whoa, I'm not going to hell no more. I thought all my life, I'm going to wreck that little car and I'm going to die and go to hell for being stupid and all this. And I laid down that night and I thought, I'm not going to hell now. This feels good. I like this. I'm not going to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, he takes care of you by leading you to confess him. Every time you feel a little nudge to witness to somebody that you work with, don't say, well, I don't know what to say and they might get mad. Go ahead and spit it out. Amen. Spit it out. Hallelujah. I mean, we talked to people yesterday on bus route. I talk to people all over at the flea market. And all that. Listen, if they're not ashamed to go out with purple hair mohawks and baby diaper pins sticking through their nose, we ain't got no maybe being ashamed of knowing who the creator of the universe is and telling people that we're proud to be his child. I'm telling you, he, one of the ways God takes care of you is by allowing you to witness. That's why you ought to get in the bus ministry. That's why you ought to be, go soul winning. That's why you ought to knock on somebody's door. That's why you ought to be actively invited. That's God taking care of you. He sees the big picture. Number five, he, te- he takes care of you by teaching you to be faithful. He said, Matthew 10, 35, I am come to set a man at variance against his father, mother against father. Family. You know what family problems are? God's always taking care of you. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Somebody said this. Said the robin to the sparrow, I really do not know why these human beings rush around and worry so, said the sparrow to the robin. I think it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. You know what God does? He will allow pain and heartache in your life. You say, well, why do you do that if he cares about it? Listen, you ever got a kid? If you give a kid everything it wants, what's going to happen to it? He's going to be mean as a devil. And we're the same way. God can't just do every little old thing we want him to and never have no problem. Why, we wouldn't be worth shooting. That's God caring for you. He allows adversity. He allows, you say, well, Brother Danny, Paul's thorn in the flesh. Paul, the great apostle Paul, they say the greatest Christian ever 
uh, in the history of the Christian church. I don't know, but that's what they say. Paul had something. He called it the messenger of Satan. Honestly, it's hard for me to believe bad eyesight is a messenger of Satan. All preachers say that, but that's hard for me to believe. Hard for me to believe that bad eyesight is a messenger of Satan. But he said, you has given to me a thorn in the flesh. And Paul said, Lord, this hurts. It's sticking in me. Would you take it out, please? The Lord said, no. Paul said, Lord, I'm doing right. I ain't sinning. I ain't doing nothing wrong. Please, it's killing me. Would you take it out? The Lord said, nope. He said, God, if you care about me, why don't you just fix this situation? Why don't you just do it, Lord? And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And you know what he told him later? He said, lest I should be exalted above measure. You know what Paul knew? He said, I'm flesh. And I knew if I didn't have that thorn that I'd get to thinking I was hot stuff and I'd start thinking I was better than other people through the abundance of the revelation given unto me. So God let me have a thorn in the flesh. I don't know what your thorn in the flesh is, but i tell you one thing. It, just because it's there is not an indication that God don't care about you. It is a strong indication that he does and he's leaving it there for a reason. Mom used to sing another song. And that Ethel Waters and all them sung these old songs. It said, Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. Thank God I know he watches me. I don't know what you're hurting for this morning, but his eyes on that sparrow. Thank God he's watching over you. He's watching over you. I remember hearing uh, uh, Johnny. Y'all know who Johnny Erickson Tata, that girl. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know much about her theology or doctrine. I probably wouldn't agree on some of it. But I'll tell you one thing. That girl helped a lot of people. Amen. She has. I used to listen to her on radio when I first got saved and when she was 14, she got saved. Average kid, average church, 14 years old, and she got saved. And she lived right for a while, but as most kids, got into high school, got backslid in her teenage years. And their family was very athletic, and they rode, had horses and run and, and stuff. Very, very, very athletic family. And then you've heard that story. There's, they was at the, up in Delaware, I think, and they went to the beach or somewhere. And anyway, she dove in some shallow water. And when she dove in that shallow water, it, her, her neck popped back like that, popped her, broke her neck. And she floated up to the top and would have drowned if, if her sister or friend or something, I forget who it was, grabbed her and pulled her in. They took her to the hospital. She was still a teenager, I think, wound up a paraplegic. In a, in, a, in a wheelchair. And if you've heard her testimony, tremendous testimony, she said all them days and weeks, God, why did this happen? God, why did that happen? And long story short, that girl now for 50 years has served the Lord. She paints, she puts them brush in her teeth. Y'all ever seen them paint? It's amazing. In her teeth and paints pictures and has like a worldwide ministry and, and helps people all over the place and you know what she said? She said, that was God watching over me. Who knows what my life would have been if that hadn't happened. I don't understand why stuff happens, but I know one thing. God's watching over us, and he, he correcteth every son. You know, another sign of God's care for you is when he corrects you when you're wrong. You ought to thank him for a spanking. If you see somebody that never spanks their kids and never disciplines their kids, what do you think? They don't care about it. That's what the Bible says. 
He that loveth his son chasteneth him betimes. If you love your kid, you're, going, you're not going to let them just run wild and do anything. You're going, you're going to put them in line. And God does us like it. If he's whipping you this morning, it's not a sign he's a bad father. Amen. He cares about you. He cares about you. I'm going to stop right there. Y'all come and get us a song. Let's stand. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I don't know what you're going through this morning or how bad it is at your house. I have no idea. There's probably people in here this morning. You think, I just don't know if I can go another day, preacher. Maybe this is your time. This is coming. Say, Lord, I thank you taking care of me and, and Lord I'm sorry for doubting you I'm sorry I shouldn't have doubted you let's just get in this altar this morning let's just come on come on get how you see come on don't let the devil talk you out of it amen that's right others 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 let's just get up here in this morning and say Lord even that whipping you give me Lord I know it's cause you love me and it's because I'm your child and I thank you Lord your eyes on the sparrow and I know you watch me. God, do something this morning. I pray for somebody here this morning that needs encouraging, that you would encourage them right now, I pray. Dear God, do what ought to be done. Touch every single heart here this morning, and we'll thank you for what you do. Those that are hurting, those that are discouraged, those that are just about ready to throw in the towel, dear Lord, please speak to that heart. We'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let's sing. Amen. Come right now. Come on. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Just as I am without one plea, but there thou art. Sing, everybody. Wash it. Sing, y'all. For me and that thou art. Amen. Come. Come on this morning. Come on this morning, get your heart right. Of God I come. I Let's sing another verse. Everybody sing out now. Just, Just as I am and waiting not sing. to rid my soul of one dark God. Amen. Blood can cleanse each spot, oh land. Hallelujah. Of God I come. I come. You know, life's hard sometimes. Yes, sir. If you ain't gone through hard times, get ready because they're coming. Just about the time you think everything's going great. Something's going to happen over here, over there somewhere. Guarantee it. It's just the way life is. It pays to know what you got on the inside. It pays to know you got the real thing that'll carry you through when life gets hard. It pays to know your feet's on solid ground. It pays to know you know the Bible is right and God is real. Amen. Amen. I'm still praying this morning that God speak to hearts. Amen. 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 You know why we have to go through hard times? Because of sin. I tell Ethan and Molly all the time. I mean, uh, least little thing. When I'm going to get a splinter or something, I said, you know why, why that happened? I said, sin's in the world. I believe that. All the bad stuff in the world because of sin. We're going to another land where ain't going to be no sin. We won't have no problems. You know why stuff stinks? Because of sin. Right? You know why babies cry like Frankster? Because of sin. Because of sin. That's right. You know why you, you got bad breath? Because of sin. Every bad thing in the world 
Well, oh, Brother Danny, you're crazy. No, I ain't neither. I am not crazy. I know exactly what I'm talking about. If there wasn't no sin, then nothing would be bad or wrong. That's what we got to look forward to, a land where there's no sin. Until then, we just got to live in this mess and do the best we can. Amen? All right. Now, don't forget tonight, come back and bring somebody with you. I've got something different, completely different on my heart for tonight, so don't miss it. And then don't forget, next Sunday night, next Sunday night, 6 o'clock, we will begin the long-anticipated series of messages. I get texts all the time. When are you going to do that? When are you going to do that? Somebody call me down here in Newton. Somebody text me from out west somewhere. And it's next Sunday night, what changed the church? It's educational. It's informative. And you need to know it as a Christian. Okay? All right. Let's all bow our head. We'll be dismissed in prayer. But Jason, how about you praying? Everybody fellowship now before you go. Be friendly in the Lord. Be careful getting out.